treating sun unfairly and distorting democracy. President Donald Trump on Sunday morning tweeted that fake news is treating his son unfairly for meeting with a Russian lawyer, adding that the media are distorting democracy in America. Hillary Clinton can illegally get the questions to the debate and delete 33,000 emails but my son Don is being scorned by the fake news media. The president said in a series of posts. With all of its phony unnamed sources and highly slanted and even fraudulent reporting, hash fake news is distorting democracy in our country. Also on Twitter, the president thanked former advisor Michael Caputo for defending the administration against accusations of colluding with Russia. In the same vein, he thanked attendees of the U.S. Women's Open Golf Tournament who far outnumbered the protesters. Trump attended the tournament on his golf course at Bedminster in New Jersey, on Friday. The event continues through Sunday. Trump often uses Twitter to rail against the media. The president in particular has criticized the media for what he calls unfair and biased coverage. His son Donald Trump Jr. has come under intense scrutiny since the New York Times last weekend published a story detailing his meeting, along with then campaign chairman Paul Manafort and advisor Jared Kushner. With a Russian Trump triggers flight of Democratic candidates. Fueled by antipathy toward President Donald Trump and high expectations about their party's fortunes in the 2018 midterms, Democrats are lining up to run for House seats, creating crowded primary fields in some of the most competitive races in the country. In California last week, Vietnam era veteran Paul Kerr who has never run for political office, jumped into the race to take on nine-term GOP Representative Darrell Issa, the richest member of Congress. Kerr, a real estate investor and Navy veteran, is the third challenger to date seeking to defeat Issa, the high-profile former chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, who barely survived a 2016 challenge. Issa is considered the most vulnerable of seven California GOP House members representing districts that voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. But his colleagues have even more contenders to worry about. Eight challengers have lined up to take on Central Valley Republican Jeff Denham. Unequal number have jumped into the fray against embattled San Diego area Representative Duncan Hunter the focus of a Justice Department criminal investigation regarding his alleged use of campaign funds to pay for family expenses. Controversial Rep. Dana Rahabacher of Huntington Beach, recently in the headlines for his own dealings with Russia, has seven Democrats contesting his re-election. Rep. Steve Knight of Palmdale has six. A coastal way in New Jersey, Democrats, sometimes hard-pressed to find candidates willing to take on entrenched Republican incumbents, also have a glut of willing challengers this year in two of the state's five Republican-held districts. Those districts, which include many New York City bedroom communities, are wealthy and well-educated. Clinton narrowly won the Central Jersey-based 7th District, while Trump won the North Jersey-based 11th by a slim margin. It's 100% a testament to the grassroots energy that's showed up at town halls and events across the country, said Drew Godinich, a spokesman for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, which is pounding out news releases highlighting vulnerable GOP incumbents. In 2018, the big difference is not only the number, it's the quality of these challengers, he said. Trump is obviously a part of it, and so is health care. Democratic strategist Gary South, who advised presidential campaigns for Al Gore and Joe Lieberman, said the enthusiasm is especially revved up because Democrats need only 24 seats nationally to flip to get control of the House, and more than a quarter of those may be in California. History is on their side, he argues, over the past 20 cycles in the first term of a presidency, Republican or Democratic, the average number flipped has been 23 seats. In New Jersey, Mike Duhaim, a veteran Republican strategist who helped lead both of Governor Chris Christie's successful gubernatorial campaigns, as well as his unsuccessful presidential campaign, acknowledges the GOP has tough work ahead. It feels very much, like, the reverse of what 2010 was on the Republican side, said Duhaim, who's been hired by GOP Representative Rodney Furlingson. There was just an energy on the Republican side after President Obama got elected, 
and I feel the same energy now on the left. Furlingerson has for 24 years been the epitome of a safe incumbent. With ancestral roots in state politics that stretch to the colonial era, a New Jersey town is named after the family's progenitor, and a Newark thoroughfare bears the family name. Furlingerson has not faced a serious electoral challenge in his entire congressional tenure. In fact, when liberal filmmaker Michael Moore in 2000 sought to demonstrate the lack of competitive congressional seats, he looked to Furlingerson's district. The filmmaker unsuccessfully tried to get a ficus tree on the ballot against the congressman, who is an heir to the Procter and Gamble fortune and chairman of the powerful House Appropriations Committee. But now constituents are holding protest at Furlingerson's office, some organized by a grassroots group called NJ 11th for Change. They're clamoring for him to hold a town hall meeting, which he has refused to do. It's a similar story in the Central Jersey Bass 7th. Democrats say they're surprised at just how many Democrats want a shot at GOP Representative Leonard Lance. Joey Novick, a progressive activist who lives in the district, organized a candidate forum in which five candidates or potential candidates showed up. Novick said he hadn't heard about anyone seeking to challenge Lance at this point in 2015. That is sort of the interesting magic about this year, he said. Three Democratic candidates have already declared, bank executive Linda Weber, teacher Lisa Mandelblatt and attorney Scott Salmon. And at least four other people are exploring a run, including social worker Peter Jacob, who ran against Lance in 2016 and got 43 percent of the vote. Nobody took this district seriously. We showed up. Our campaign showed up. We knew what was at stake in 2016, Jacob said. People have realized there's blood in the water now. That's the phrase everybody is using. South said GOP candidates across the country now find themselves hobbled by a horribly unpopular GOP president whose approval ratings are in the 30s, and a demoralized GOP base. And midterms are always a referendum on who controls the White House. Even so, conservative author Jim Lacey, a Trump delegate to the Republican National Convention from California, said Democrats, even in solidly blue California, shouldn't get too cocky about their chances. He contends that the crowded Democratic primaries are a good thing for Republicans, because Democrats will train their fire on each other leaving the eventual nominees bloodied and bruised going into the fall general election. Democratic Party politics are just as cutthroat, if not more, than the Republicans in the state recently, Lacey said. More primary candidates also increase the likelihood that simmering inter-party divisions between progressives and moderates will spill into the open. The more challengers, the greater the chance the wrong challenger advances to the general, said Bill Whalen a Hoover Institution fellow and a former aide to former California GOP Governor Pete Wilson. You're talking about a bunch of people competing for 40 percent of the vote. So it raises the chance you'll end up with a Chelsea Handler Democrat, his description of someone who's too liberal or unsuited to the local electorate. All politics are local, especially in House races, and Democrats have been learning this in special elections, Whalen said. It's not about having someone running against Donald Trump as it is having someone who's the right local fit. You have to tailor the candidate to the district. Trump calls ABC slash Washington Post poll most inaccurate poll around election time. President Donald Trump on Sunday criticized the ABC slash Washington Post poll, calling it the most inaccurate poll around election time after a new poll was released showing the president's approval rating at historic lows. The ABC slash Washington Post poll, even though almost 40 percent is not bad at this time, was just about the most inaccurate poll around election time. The president wrote on Twitter. A new ABC slash Washington Post poll was released Sunday had Trump's job approval for his first six months as president at just 36 percent making him have the lowest approval rating of any president during their first six months in office in 70 years. 58 percent disapprove of Trump's performance, according to the poll. Both former presidents Barack Obama and George W. Bush were at 59 percent by the end of their first six months in office. On the eve of the 2016 election, 
a Washington Post ABC News tracking poll had Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton at a four-point advantage over Trump, with 47 percent to 43 percent. Clinton went on to win the popular vote by almost 3 million votes.